Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be installing Proxmox or VM emulation onto the Zima board. So let's get started. Now I do wanna thank Icewell for sending this over to me. I did talk about this board on my last video, which I, I still love. I really love playing with this guy. On my last video, we only talked about specs and what it comes with on this. Today, we're actually gonna do a project where we're throwing on Proxmox into this guy. And for those of you who don't know what Proxmox is, it's an operating system built to run virtual machines. So we're gonna test it on this guy to see how far we could take it, what works, what doesn't work, and we'll see where it goes from there. I'm also using a SATA SSD, a 480 gigabyte SSD to host the operating system. So I'm not touching really the EMMC on here. So I still retain the main operating system. I'm just gonna boot from the SSD itself. I will also be trying out pass-through on this guy. So I'm gonna slap this card on here, which is an NVMe extension board um, to this guy and see if I could pass through the, to the VM itself. Now, everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. That's including the Proxmox operating system as well as where you can get one of these Zima boards. And let's just jump right into it. As far as installing the operating system, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is slap in the ISO or make a bootable USB, run the operating system, follow the prompts. I ended up selecting the SSD as my installer, and that is it. Once you're done with that, you just boot right into the environment. It'll spit out the IP address you should be connecting to, and you're gonna be presented with the console. All right, so here we are at the console or the dashboard of Proxmox. Uh, Proxmox is a VM environment that I currently use for everything. It runs QEMU in the background and also Debian. Uh, this is the latest version, which I'm running 7.1-7. And yeah, it basically works right out of the box for the Zima board. Here's some specs on it. This is um, what you would notice is that it's got four CPUs, which is four cores, clocked at 1.1 gigahertz. And I think it's turbo boost to 2.2. I do have eight gigs of RAM on this guy and we have seven gigabytes of swap. Now I technically could increase this a little bit by, I think I have 256 megabytes used for either the GPU or 512. I got to play around with that, but I probably could squeeze out a little bit more RAM out of this, but ultimately everything does work. I was even able to get pass through working. So I'm able to pass through some hardware to my VM and yeah, it works perfectly. Now, um, I am using this on an SSD where I think it came with a 480 gigabyte SSD that they shipped me. That's connected to the SATA port in the back. So that's what I'm using as storage for the VMs. So it shows 340 right here, but 100 gigabytes went over to this guy, which is the local port. About 100 gigabytes over here so you can store ISO images and other stuff like the operating system and all. So ultimately, yeah, this is where we're at. So if I head over to hardware, you can see I actually passed over a PCIe device. This device is actually the NVMe board. And in here, you can see that this guy, 01:00 is the NVMe con controller. That's why I have passed through to this guy. So uh, we're gonna be able to use it on this Ubuntu operating system. Now, keep in mind that this is not a very strong board. It's running a Celeron four core, only got eight gigs of RAM. While you are able to do VD-T, which is allowing for VMs and everything, you are limited by the resources that you have on the system to how many uh, VMs you can run. Now I'm running a full-fledged VM over here, which is Ubuntu. I installed it through an ISO, uh, ISO uh, but I wouldn't recommend doing it on this guy. If you really need Ubuntu, just run a container, uh, which is one of these create CT on the top right. And you could run Ubuntu, if you don't really need a desktop or its own separate kernel and everything, I would just recommend it that way. But to show you that this does work on a full-fledged um, ISO image and uh, desktop, yeah, here we have it. So if I go over to show application and I go to disk, you should be able to see the Samsung NVMe. Yep, here we go, 250 gigabytes, free space, my Evolve 960, NVMe, it's free because I just cleared it out. But yeah, I'm able to actually pass through hardware um, to, uh, to the VM and operate it like I would if I need to do anything. If I want to pass through a graphic card, I should be able to um, say a controller, NVMe controller, maybe 10 gigabit ethernet controller, I don't know. PCIe does work through pass through. So that's one good thing about this if you need to play around with specific hardware that requires PCIe. And that's what's good about this being an exposed PCIe board for 
uh, running some sort of VM stuff. Anyway, if you take a look at the summary over here, I only passed through like about two gigs of RAM to this guy. It's using two cores. And if I go back into the regular summary, you can see it's using about 20% of the out of the four cores. And it's taking up about 41% of the RAM usage. Now, the operating system itself still needs like about one gig of RAM. So again, you are limited to maybe two VMs, possibly three if you're running containers. So you are very limited to that point. Anyway, that is it. It does work with VMs. And if you need to do like specific tasks, like passing through a hardware just to test something, this is your guy. That is it for me, guys. I just wanted to show you guys that this board can do it all almost. It, it does Proxmox, VMs, PCIe pass-throughs. It's got two NICs on this guy, so you could definitely run PFSense, and that's something I'm looking forward to, as well as because it's got eight gigs of RAM built on board, I do want to run this as a free NAS system as well. So those videos are on the way. One of the first things I did really want to test was Proxmox to see if it can run any VMs, if it's going to have any issues, but yeah, no, it doesn't. Now, if you guys have any questions about this video, hit it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.